Paschatyadeshatarine Vanchakaupata Rupyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhaihevacha Patitanam Pavan Hebyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So welcome everyone to our Bhakti Shastri study of the Bhagavad Gita. I'll put you into let's share the screen. Everyone can see, okay? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, you're here. Good. Okay. A quick review. Last week, we were looking at how bhakti yoga can be done without practicing karma, jnana and jnana yoga, right? We were explaining how bhakti yoga includes all these things. It's already there. Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Jnana Yoga, it's already there within Bhakti Yoga. Who can remember what particular quality of Karma Yoga? What is Karma Yoga? What's the main quality in Karma Yoga? Hare Krishna Maharaji, Dhamma Pranam. Uh, if we do everything for Krishna, every work for Krishna, for the satisfaction and desire of Krishna, then it, then the karma yoga, karma yoga will become a bhakti yoga. Well, if you that's yeah, you're saying, but what's the main quality of karma yoga? What what, to, what is we detach from the fruits and the results of the right, work which we do. That's the right. Right. Detached, right, detached. That's the main quality for bhakti yoga, right? There should be much should be detached from the fruit. So a devotee is detached, as you say, that they offer the fruit to Krishna. And what about the jnana yogi? How does that relate to bhakti yoga? Someone can Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Uh, once, once we are in a practicing Bhakti Yoga, uh, we read Sastra book, learn about Krishna, that's already a Gnana Yoga. I, I don't quite understand what you mean. What do we have to do? When we practice Bhakti Yoga, we read Shastra and gain knowledge about learning Krishna. So that is Jnana Yoga. Jnana Yoga is cultivating knowledge. Yes. Knowledge about we learn we cultivate knowledge about Krishna and the Supreme Lord. Only only Krishna. We cultivate knowledge only about Krishna? Uh, no, Maharaj. What else do we cultivate knowledge about? That we are not this body, we are soul. Relationship with Krishna, and what is our... What did, what did Prabhu say? Uh, knowledge of our relationship with Krishna. Yes, but... the. Uh, are we only concerned with Krishna? And his energies also, Maharaj. Right, and his energies, right. We're concerned with Krishna's energies and Krishna's incarnations, Krishna's 
different expansions, everything in relation to Krishna we're concerned with. Okay, the jnana yogi, however, they're more concerned, they're not so much concerned with Krishna. They're concerned with other things. But jnana yoga, the main point is cultivating knowledge. So with the bhakti yoga, we also cultivate knowledge. And jnana yoga, how does that relate to bhakti yoga? Hare Krishna Maharaj Yes. Dhyana, Dhyana Yoga, we need to concentrate our mind and senses on Krishna and His services. Right. We have to meditate. We have to remember Krishna. So we explained how this Bhakti Yoga contains all the components of the other yoga systems. And then we also spoke about Astanga Yoga. Why is it not practical in the modern age? What's the difficulty? Maharaj, one should go to secular places. Yes. So, are, are, there, no, are there no sacred places today? Uh, not in the cities. <laughs> not in the cities, yeah. Any other, what other problems are there with the Stanga Yoga? So the, uh, people are so much um, engaged in the material activities, um, so the minds are restless and they can't really focus on meditation. All right. D difficult to control the mind. Right. But Lord and also they are not also they are not very really serious about um, the self-realization. But in the Bhagavad Gita, when Arjuna said it was difficult to control the mind. Did Krishna accept that? Did he say, oh, okay, uh, it's too difficult to control the mind? What did Krishna say? Arjuna was saying, very difficult to control the mind, but how did Krishna respond to that? That with constant practice uh, of Krishna consciousness and doing the devotional services, we can control our mind? Yes. Krishna said, Abhyasena tu kontiya vairagyena chagriyate. Lord Krishna said, I know it's difficult, Arjuna, but it is possible by constant practice and detachment. We also have to control the mind in our chanting of Hare Krishna and in our performance of devotional service. We are also dealing with the mind. So we have to also practice. Uh, the impracticality of the Astanga Yoga system for the modern age will be the, the, the different principles which are required, as we said, going away to a remote place and for a, for a long time. It, it's not a quick process. It takes a long time. Now we read in the Srimad Bhagavatam about how different yogis, how they performed it. Kadama Muni was doing Astanga Yoga 10,000 years and the Prachetas went into the bottom of the ocean to do Astanga Yoga a long time. So going away from the world is one thing very difficult for people. We're not trained to go away from the world in a remote place to sit and to, to control the mind and senses, to sit still, first of all. Just sitting for most people is very difficult. But to get them to sit still and for a long time, very difficult for most people to do. They cannot do it. Then practicing celibacy, people that are in family life, how can they practice celibacy? Not everybody married, but it, you're going to do Astanga Yoga, Kadama Muni did it before his marriage, before he accepted Devahuti as his wife, then he was doing the Astanga Yoga. But it's not really for householders. You have to practice very strictly. 
So these kind of restrictions make it very difficult for ordinary people, modern age. Arjuna, he himself said he couldn't do it. Now, what was difficult for Arjuna 5,000 years ago means it will be much more difficult for us. So we're going ahead today, lesson four on this section, the topmost yogi. Nasur Api oh, Krishna. Now it's asking my password, maybe it's come back. I think you joined back, Maharaj. Oh, we're back, yeah. yeah. Are you I, back? Uh, can you join in the meeting? Yeah, you're back. Yeah, he's back. He's back. This meeting is being recorded. Yeah. Sometimes our internet, the internet here is unstable. Hare Krishna. This meeting is being recorded. Hare Krishna, can you hear me? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Oh. Yes, Maharaj, we can hear. <laughs> okay, back again. Seems to be on and off. Now, anyway, we'll try. 
خاصی Who's the host? Yagna, are you the host? Maharaj, you are the host, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, no, they just, they, I, I'm not the host. I don't know how they, it happened, but they, they're telling me Maharaj, I... Maharaj, you, you, you I, became the co-host. I became the co-host. Okay, now, I, I, because I tried to screen share and they wouldn't let me. They were saying you can't, you're not allowed to share the screen. Okay, so can you, can you share the screen now? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. All right. So, Bhagavad Gita 644. By virtue of the divine consciousness of his previous life, he automatically becomes attracted to the yogic principles, even without seeking them. First of all, why would he be unsuccessful? Any suggestions? The unsuccessful yogi. What happened? Attachment or lust, Maharaj? Yes. Attachment or lust? Yes. Could it must have been something? Some kind of. Maharaj, yoga? What? Byproducts of yoga. Byproducts of yoga? What do you mean? Uh, when we get the, uh, when he, for example, if a yogi is performing different yoga practices, automatically he gets the mystic powers. Oh, some other things may have created some problem. Yes, sometimes we see sometimes the, the the person may be doing yoga and they may get some followers and they become attracted by the the name and the fame and sometimes they, they get also pranami you know they're given some money or dakshina and they may become materialistic and they want to enjoy and so th these kind of things sometimes there are obstacles there are problems on the path of practice of yoga. Somebody may be renounced, they appear to be renounced, and people are attracted by renunciation, and they give them offerings, they present to them things, maybe money or some gold or some jewels or some valuable things, and they become affected by it. And sometimes you may even build a temple or have land and something, you build a temple and you become possessive about it. You think, this is mine, you know, it belongs to me. So like that, and this, this kind of attachment, material attachment could restrict us getting the real success to go out of the material world. So we come back again. So, in, in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes two situations, that somebody's practiced for a long time and not successful, and somebody practiced a short time, just a short time, but not successful. So, Lord Krishna describes different two scenarios and different results. So, here, 644, describing because of his previous life, because of the association in maybe Krishna consciousness or practicing some spiritual path, he becomes attracted to the yogic principles, even without seeking them. Krishna arranges. Hmm? <laughs> so, uh, we're quoting this verse which comes up in the purport. Srila Prabhupada's purport describing how 
a devotee who is chanting the holy name, he doesn't have to do any other things. It's a verse spoken by Devahuti. You can see in the picture Devahuti with her son Kapila. So this verse was actually spoken by Devahuti describing uh, that one who chants the holy name is far advanced in spiritual life, even if born in families of dog eaters. Such, 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 such chanters have undoubtedly performed all kinds of austerities and sacrifices, bathed in all sacred places and finished all scriptural studies. So it's a, it's a nice verse which we often quote, Prabhupada would often use it, to establish the importance of chanting the holy name. That somebody who is chanting, chanting the holy name is understood that in their previous life, They've already done all these other things. They've already done austerities and sacrifices, they've bathed in the holy places, they studied the scriptures, even though they may be born in a family of dog eaters. But it's understood that in their previous life they, they were, did a lot of things. Why? Because now they're chanting the holy name with determination. So it's an indication that someone's very advanced in their spiritual life. Mm -hmm. And so, as de described here, he becomes attracted to the yogic principles even without seeking them. You see the example Haridas Thakur. Haridas Thakur was born in a Mohammedan family. And although he was born in a Mohammedan family, his whole life he never ever took meat. He was born in a family, a Muslim family, who were taking care of a cow herd, a dairy herd, and he was brought up drinking milk. And as a young man he became attracted to chanting the holy name and he left his Mohammedan family and associated with Advaita Acharya. So Arjuna was worried, you know, what happens, somebody takes up the process and they're not successful. It's a good question. New people coming to Krishna consciousness may ask like that. You know, if I join this Krishna consciousness movement and I take up this way of life, I'm going to lose all my old friends. Prabhupada said like that. He said, Becoming a devotee, he said, it's like getting married. You lose your old friends and you get new friends. So, becoming a devotee means uh, some changes. So Arjuna was asking Krishna, you know, if I give up, every, become, I take to this path which you're describing from the Bhagavad Gita, if I do everything you're saying, what if I'm not successful? So then, if I'm not successful, then I've lost everything material and I haven't been successful with my spiritual life either. So, Lord Krishna explains here, Vinashastashya vidyate nahi kaoyana krit kaschit. A transcendentalist engaged in auspicious activities does not meet with destruction either in this world or in the spiritual world. 6, number 40. Chapter 6, number 40. So, tra a transcendentalist. You have, so we have to be transcendental. And even though we're not successful, we don't get to the spiritual world, but we won't get destruction. We're not going to be ruined. Either way, spiritual world or material world. So, the fallen yogi, inauspicious, what's the inauspicious type of yogi is the vikarmi. Vikarmis, they don't follow any acts of the scriptures. They engage in all sinful activities. On the marginal side, 
between inauspicious and auspicious, you have the karma kandis. Why would it be marginal? Can somebody say? Why is karma kandi marginal? What's the difference between the, the vikarmi and the karma kandi? The karma kandis are still uh, practicing uh, based on the scriptural injunctions, but the vikarmis are not. Right. Thank you, Maharaji. Yes. And then, auspicious. Karma yogis, jnana yogis, astanga yogis, bhakta yogis, they are all auspicious. Auspicious because they are following scripture, no material desires, working for spiritual improvement. Some, some may be impersonalists, karma yogis, jnana yogis, they could all be impersonalists. And you even get sometimes the bhakti yogi, they talk of bhakti yoga, but they bring in impersonal philosophy. You get these kind of people. They're talking about bhakti yoga, the means to becoming one. So you have to, you have to analyze what people are saying. But anyway, it's auspicious path because transcendental, following scriptures. So, Two kinds of people, some practice for a long time and they will take birth in a family of devotees and some practice just a short time. They will go to the higher planets, they will enjoy sense gratification there and then they'll come back to this world, this planet and they will take birth in a rich or aristocratic family where again they'll have the opportunity to continue their spiritual path. Would someone like to read, please? Hare Krishna Maharaj Ji, may I? Please, Prabhu. Uh, those who are after fruitive results for sense gratification may be elevated to a higher standard of life, even to the higher planets. But still, because they are not free from the material existence, they are not following the truly auspicious path. The only auspicious activities are those which lead one to the liberation. Power 6.40. Okay. So, people, they're doing yoga, but it's mixed with material desires. They, they want some result. They want some sense gratification. Maybe they want to go to some higher standard of life, some want to go to the higher planets, they want to go to the heavenly planets. There's a group, there are a number of groups, they do fire yagi every day, their motive is to go to higher planets. Yeah. But the real goal is not just to go to higher planets, but to get out of the material world, to end material life. Okay, so we'll have to give you a little exercise here to get you thinking. We want to hear from you select statements from Prabhupada's purports that reflect principles of his mood and mission and then discuss the importance of these principles for us individually and for ISKCON. How many people do we have here today, Yagna Prabhu? Seventeen, Maharaj. Seventeen. So, uh, so, I think groups of four, one group of five, four groups. Okay, so the, the, the group, groups, the four groups, so group one and group two will do chapter three, verse five and verse twenty-nine, and group 
3 and group 4, we'll do group 2, the questions which are for group 2, 525 and 632. Is it clear? Yes, please. Marsh, can I have a look at the question again? Yes. Oh, sorry, wait, I'll go back. Okay, here's the question. Is it okay? Can you see the question? Maharaj, uh, you entered the group, so you're not in the main group. So the Mataji who asked for oh. it is not here. Okay, I have to leave the group. Oh, Krishna. <laughs> How do I leave the group here? It's on the bottom right, Maharaj, new group. All right, now you can see it. Hare Krishna, Harini. Hare Krishna, Saki Harini. Yes, Maharaj. Did you get the question? Yes, Maharaj, I got the question. Okay. You got the verses also? Uh, yes, Maharaj, 3.5 and 3.29. Right. This meeting is being recorded. That's just. But if the soul is engaged in his natural function of Krishna consciousness, whatever he is able to do is good for him. Srimad This meeting is being recorded. Hare Krishna Maharaj, what we are doing right now, we are reading the purport for both verses, then we will discuss. Okay Prabhu, fine. You got the question, right? You've got the question, okay, yeah? Maharaj, we have the question. Okay. This meeting is being recorded.
You have the question all right, Prabhu? You're okay? You're clear about what you have to do? Hmm? You know what you're doing? So, it's clear? We're discussing two questions on the base of 525 and 632. Yes, and we want to know Prabhupada's mood and mission and how it relates to you and, and to ISKCON. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. This meeting is being recorded. Haribo? Yes, Maharaj? Yes? Although these duties are inferior due to the performer's lack of knowledge, persons who are unknowledgeable falsely identify with gross material consciousness and are full of material designations. 
This body is a gift of the material nature and one who is too much attached to the bodily consciousness is called manda or a lazy person without understanding the spirit of the soul. Sorry, without understanding of the spirit soul. Ignorant men think of the body as the self. They accept body... This meeting is being recorded. Yagna? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, you can close the meetings.
Okay, Hare Krishna. Everybody back. So, who would like to go first? Let's hear from group number two. Doing the first, uh, let's see, the first question on first group number one doing chapter three. And we had two groups, right? Yes, sir. So let's hear from one of these groups. And then we'll hear the other group. Have you got some from each verse, some statements? Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, I'm from group two and uh, we had to uh, identify from 3.5 and 3.29. So in 3.5 uh, it says that um, the spirit soul has to be engaged in the good work of Krishna consciousness. Otherwise it will be engaged in the occupations dictated by the illusory energy. So uh, I think uh, Srila Prabhupada took it up as his mission to engage, to, to start his con so that he could engage all of us in Krishna consciousness and uh, save us from falling into the uh, dictation of the illusory energy. So I think that was his moonlit mission. And uh, the same verse, uh, there is uh, a reference to a Srimad Bhagavatam shloka which talks about uh, even if how if uh, there is a fall down from uh, the path of bhakti, there is no loss or there is no failure. So this was another thing about how ISKCON and uh, when we when we practice in the association of devotees, we are constantly engaged and uh, we, are, we are we there's no fall down and even if there is there is no loss for us, which we see uh, through the example of uh, Bharat Maharaj. So that is what we thought was the importance of this verse for us. And uh, from 3.29 Maharaj, uh, there it says that um, one should undertake all kinds of risks, even to the point of approaching ignorant men to try to engage them in the acts of Krishna consciousness, which are absolutely necessary for the human being. So here again, we see Srila Prabhupada's compassion and merciful nature in that he, at, at his age, he went to the U.S. and preached to the most ignorant people and and he did that regardless of any kind of bodily considerations. So he took it up as his mission in life to follow his Guru's instructions. Uh, and uh, for the same thing, the importance of this for ISKCON and for us personally is that we have to be, we have to take uh, the example of Srila Prabhupada and all other acharyas and preach and be merciful and uh, we should pass on what we received and uh, preach yes that's all do you do you agree i don't know if i really agree what what you, what you said about Prabhupada preaching to the most ignorant people you know Prabhupada had people like university professors coming there to him and, you know, most of the people who were with Prabhupada in the beginning, they were all university graduates. They were not totally ignorant. Uh, maybe I can say spiritually ignorant then. I mean, uh, professors and students, I mean, they're intelligent in the material sense of it. Mm -hmm. And even what, uh, some of them had been to India already when they met Prabhupada. They'd already been to India, and they were searching, like they were searchers, they were seekers. They'd been, some of them had been to India, and you know they heard about yes. swamis and yogis, and they were really interested to hear from these people. Uh, I think uh, I don't know. I think I'd have to say that it was. Srila Prabhupada's mercy and his presence that... Uh, of course, they had bad habits, they had bad habits, they had faults, you know, it's not like they were pure devotees. They, you know, they were <laughs> but but uh, certainly, you know, they, they took advantage of Prabhupada's association. Anyway, thank you. Maharaj, can yeah. I say something? Uh, yes, please. I heard from 
I heard from the one senior uh, disciple, like a proper disciple once. Uh, I, uh, I was in like a Saskatoon that time. Somebody, some one disciple told. Uh, I I explained that uh, there is some crazy person is coming in our uh, associate uh, like our sangha. So he said, Prabhupada always said uh, we have to uh, crazy and lazy are not welcome in this uh, movement. Yes, so, right. Yes, that's right. Crazy, this Krishna consciousness is not for crazy people or lazy people. Right. <laughs> At least they're not, they're not supposed to live in the temple. But they can come and attend the program. And, you know, they may, they may change. There were people who were lazy and crazy, but somehow they by association, by coming to the temple and seeing the mood of the devotees, they can also pick up that they have to change if they want to be devotee. So some people, lazy and crazy people, they would transform, they would change. And, and that was a nice point, uh, Sakhi Arini Maharaji brought up the point about how Prabhupada's mood about falling that people are going to fall down, that fallen, that even if they fall, but still there's no loss. Certainly Prabhupada understood it's going to be difficult for many of the devotees who he, had, he accepted as his disciples. I was listening, there's a very, uh, Yadubhara Prabhu has done a series called Following Srila Prabhupada video series, you know, and, and they show, he shows different shootings of Prabhupada's pastimes, and then he takes devotees to speak. He has devotees speak about what was happening and what was Prabhupada talking about, what was going on at the time. So one of these uh, Prabhupada's following, following Srila Prabhupada, there was a nice one, I, I was watching New York Ratiatra, the filming of New York Ratiatra on Fifth Avenue. And Yadubara interviewed, or he had, he had speaking, he had a devotee called Drishta Jumna. Now Drishta Jumna had been a sannyasi. Oh, maybe, maybe it wasn't the New York Ratiatra, but there was, what happened, there was a, there was a Ratiatra, there was a sannyasa initiation also, took place in Mayapur. Prabhupada gave sannyas and to Mayapur, he gave about, I think, six men, he gave them all sannyas. And so one of them was this Drishta Jumna, and uh, he was describing, he said, Prabhupada was speaking that, he said, most of you are not qualified for this. And he said, but he said, what can I do? He said, I have declared war on Maya. So he said, in wartime, you know, everybody has to be used, and it's understood there will be, there will be fatalities. People will die. People's lives will be lost, and that happens in Krishna consciousness also. That Prabhupada took that risk of giving Krishna consciousness. He knew that not everybody would keep it up and maintain their vows, but still he did it because he said it's a war. I'm fighting Maya, I've declared war on Maya. But sometimes, you know, in a war people will be injured and the people will die. So some people come to Krishna consciousness and, you know, they get hurt. They're not able to keep it up and somehow they, they fall back sometimes like this. But Prabhupada understood that this is going to happen, but there's no loss. They, they have a chance to do some service. They're doing some service. And one other devotee said like that to me. He was a, a sannyasi in Prabhupada's time, and he did a lot of service. He gave a lot of money. You can see his name in the temples there in India, because he was leading Sankirtan parties who would go and collect money, and he'd bring the money and give the money to Prabhupada to build the temples. Otherwise, we had no money. We didn't have money to build these temples like Vrindavan and Juhu Temple. And so these devotees had gone to places like Japan and collected money 
and then the devotee in charge would bring the money and give it to Prabhupada. And so Prabhupada appreciated this. So the devotee had difficulty keeping his vow of sannyas. But, but he said, he said, I did some service. He said, at least I got the chance to do some service for Prabhupada. So that was Prabhupada's mercy, that he gave people the chance to do some service for, for the movement or for, for Krishna. And that service, the benefit of that service is never lost. You know, maybe later in life or the next life they will continue and they'll go on. All right. Thank you very much, Saki Harini. That was very good. Uh, we have another group. Group number one also can speak on these verses. Let's hear what you have. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Tanur Pranas. Please accept my respectful obeisances. I'll be representing group one. Yes. <clears throat> so, uh, as we had from uh, 3.5 and 3.29. So, 3.5, there's a, there's a part if someone takes uh, the Krishna consciousness, even though he may not follow the prescribed duties in the Shastras or execute the devotee service properly, and even though they may fall down from the standard, there's no loss or evil for him. And from, uh, as uh, you also explained now that, uh, you know, there will be, not everyone would be able to keep it up to the point, not able, everyone would be able to follow the work. But there is there is no loss, there is always a spiritual benefit. From this, there is this, this, there's an example that is there. Uh, there is this book called Our Family Business, which talks about Sri Prabhupada's book distribution right from 1966 to 1977, when it was, when the book distribution that started. Sri Prabhupada said in that book, the ones that, uh, uh, we are distributing so many books. So it's not necessary that, you know, you'll have the result immediately. Maybe not this life, maybe next life. Even if someone takes the book, reads one page, he's benefited. Uh, and if that person gives the book to one of his friends, one of her friends, and even if he or she reads that, uh, he reads one page, he's been, he or she is benefited. Even if they look at the picture of Krishna, if they look at the painting of Krishna, they are benefited. So. And this, you know, we can say, you know, this is the mood, the mission of uh, Sri Prabhupada that he wanted to engage, he wanted to give everyone Krishna. He wanted to engage them in some or the other service, just engage them, no matter what, how they are doing, how well they are doing, are they following or not. But there's somewhere or the other spiritual benefit that is going into their account. And they will be benefited, someday or the other they will come. Not Maybe not this life, maybe next life, but somewhere or the other they will be benefited. Very nice. Thank you. That's a very nice point, Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu. Um, and something from the next verse, the other verse? Yes, yes, I do have it. Uh, from 3.29, but the devotees of the Lord are more kind than the Lord because they understand the purpose of the Lord. Cons uh, con uh, consequently, they undertake all kinds of risk, even to the point of approaching ignorant men to try to engage them in the acts of Krishna Consciousness, which are absolutely necessary for the evening. The greatest example, obviously, is Sri Prabhupada, how he went from India to the West. And to, uh, and as you said, all the learned men, they all uh, graduate, but he took a risk of uh, engaging them in the service of the Lord. Like once in your lecture, uh, Maharaj, you had explained that, uh, you, know, uh, you know, all these young devotees were getting sannyas. And Srila Prabhupada said, if they're old, what they're going to do? They're, they're going to do it now. If they're young, they'll be able to do more. So Srila Prabhupada wanted to give this responsibility so that they understand what responsibility they are taking and uh, what they are supposed to do. Like the best example I can give um, uh, is again from our family business that book. At that time, they were so engaged in, you know, uh, distributing Srila Prabhupada's book. They, they came up with strategies. They used to go from door to door. They used to, you know, uh, have stalls every year. And they had uh, moving Sankirtan parties. Like a, a bus, the, they used to take a bus, they used to uh, take books in them, and they used to move around the whole area. They had moving Sankirtan party to distribute books because they take it so seriously. And Srila Prabhupada was so pleased every time he used to, you know, uh, we had, I guess, uh, the uh, BBT, uh, 
Bhakti Vedanta Bush Trust newsletter that used to come out every week that had the book distribution scores uh, written down on them. This week, this temple did this much, this temple did this one, this uh, Sankirtan party did this much. So Srila Prabhupada was very pleased that the, uh, the devotees are taking this very seriously. So my point is that no matter, uh, you know, even the smallest service, you give them Krishna, rest, the Lord will take care. That's it, Maharaj. And what about you individually? Individually, Maharaj, we should, uh, you know, take this, we, we should be inspired by Srila Prabhupada that the hardships and the way he went out crossing, you know, all boundaries and uh, taking so much pain towards, uh, to give Krishna to everyone. In that way, we should, uh, you know, take that inspiration and, uh, you know, uh, and follow him the way, the, uh, follow his instructions. Okay. Thank you very much, Prabhu. Very good. Yes. All right. Let's hear from the other group and the other section of verses. 525 and 632. We have two groups discussing these verses. Group number three. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. I will be presenting for group three of uh, the Muru Sri Prabhupada and the mission and how important that is to us individually and for ISKCON. So in the very first statement, Sri Prabhupada is making the point in, in 525, only a person who is fully Krishna conscious can be set to be engaged in welfare work for all the living entities. So Prabhupada often said, the ultimate welfare work is preaching Krishna consciousness. The, the suffering of the human Prabhupada is mentioning here that why we suffer is because of our forgetfulness of Krishna. Therefore, we have to act to revive the consciousness within the, um, the entire human society. And this is compared to be the, the highest or the topmost welfare work. Therefore, as individuals also, we have to apply these principles so we can also make advancement and help ourselves. And as a mission out of comp or compassion, ISKCON also has to ensure that this preaching work is going on nicely. So that the entire human society, and this is the Buddha Shri Prabhupada, he wants to help everyone. The entire human uh, society Prabhupada wants to give this Krishna. This is the, how compassionate he is. Uh, a Krishna conscious person has no doubts about the supremacy of Krishna. He has no doubt because he's completely free from all sin. A person engaged only in ministering the physical, Prabhupada is comparing here, the physical welfare of human society cannot fully help them because all these physical welfare activities ends with the body. But Krishna consciousness, on the other hand, for the advancement of person making continues. It, that goes along, it goes beyond the body. When a man is fully conscious of his relationship with Krishna, he's actually a liberated soul. Therefore, uh, whatever material uh, affinity or tabernacle is, he's still Krishna conscious. So, Prabhupada continues in the in 632. And some of these points are actually repeated here, but it's said a little bit more uh, in, in a different way. One who is Krishna conscious is the perfect yogi. And since we're dealing with the yoga system today, because he's, a, he's fully aware of the happiness and distress of the living entity by the dint of his personal experience. Again, Prabhupada finds out the cause for happiness is knowing Krishna. And the, the cause of misery or suffering or distress is not remembering Krishna, forgetfulness of Krishna. And because one is Krishna consciousness or one in Krishna consciousness is happy, he tries to distribute the knowledge of Krishna everywhere. Since the perfect yogi tries to broadcast the importance of becoming Krishna conscious, he is the best philanthropist in the world. And he is the dearest 
servitor of the Lord. The prophet is denoting this, this point very carefully here. In other words, he's mentioning uh, a reference of 1869 here also. A devotee of the Lord always looks to the welfare of all the living entity. And this way, he is factually the friend of everyone. And this is the mood of the Vaishnava or the Acharya. Prabhupada was in this category. So this compassion, you know, he feels he wants to give Krishna consciousness, which is the, the ultimate jewel. So Prabhupada wanted to present that to everyone. And this is what he's encouraging all of us to apply in our life, to make our lives sublime, and also to give this to everyone else. Yes, very He's the nice. best thing because he does not desire perfection for his personal benefit, but he tries for others. Mark, excuse me, you were going to say something. No, I thought you'd finished. I'm just going to thank you very much for your contribution. Very nice. A lot of realization there. Very powerful. Good presentation. Very nice. All right, one more group remaining. Yeah, Hare Krishna Maharaj Dhanatra. I tried to represent uh, group number four for yes. the same thing uh, Ramana Singh Prabhu has explained uh, most of the points. And then I would like to say about like general this principle, the importance of this principle for individually or for Islam. And then as it is mentioned, uh, a person is, uh, when, as soon as a person comes to Krishna consciousness or situated in Krishna consciousness, he is a perfect yogi. And, uh, and exactly he knows the reason behind yoga and then who created this process and then he definitely tried to understand and uh, and then he he actually trying to help everyone by broadcasting the same very same message like uh, and then uh, trying to explain the krishna supremacy and then he also understood the real happiness in this world and which is not based on the bodily platform uh, so, uh, so he is a perfect yogi. As it is mentioned elsewhere, like uh, Krishna consciousness is the best welfare activities for the uh, largest number of people for the longest period. So, and then in that way, um, uh, a pure devotee of the Lord, uh, trying to be a friend to everyone, which in the, in the case of yogi, he is not actually. He is trying to elevate himself individually. And this is not the purpose of um, Prabhupada established ISKCON. ISKCON is meant for like uh, distributing the message to everyone irrespective of different categories. And then we have a different mechanism also, like different methodology also. For example, distributing prashadam and distributing the books and uh, accommodating the uh, people in the temples. And uh, so this is the best welfare activities which Prabhupada has uh, laid it uh, for the mass number of people in this in the moment, uh, Maharaj. So this is what I could see uh, in, from both powerpoints. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you, Prabhu. Yes. So we do see it in Prabhupada's purpose. You can see a lot of uh, his mood and mission, his very deep desire, burning desire to distribute the message of Krishna consciousness and his compassion for the fallen souls and how tolerant, how merciful he is. <laughs> one devotee was telling, he said, uh, one time uh, they told Prabhupada that one of his disciples was taking drugs. So Prabhupada said, tell him that I'm going to reject him if he does not stop. So then devotee came afterwards to Prabhupada and said to Prabhupada, Prabhupada, were you serious when you said you were going to reject that devotee if he didn't stop taking drugs? And, and Prabhupada closed his eyes for a minute and said, I, he said, actually, I can never give up anybody. I can never turn anyone away. He said, the mercy of Lord Nityananda is unlimited. So this was Prabhupada's response. In, that kind of situation, that he could never give up anyone because the mercy of Lord Nityananda is unlimited. Someone please read this for us. 
Hare Krishna Maharaj Ji, may I? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Binds us to Lord Krishna. Krishna consciousness is the last link in the yogic chain and the link that binds us to the Supreme Person, Lord Shri Krishna. Without this final link, the chain is practically useless. The perfection of yoga, chapter 8. So without that final link, useless. Then there must be the connection with Krishna. That's the point, right? Krishna consciousness, it has, has to be there. Yes? Go ahead, Maharaj, keep reading. We have, to distru- distur- we have to disturb them. So, we have to disturb them. That is our duty. We have to disturb these envious persons. Hare Krishna, that is our duty, to disturb them. And that is the greatest service. Just like a man is sleeping and somebody is coming to kill him and other friend, Mr. Such and Such, wake up, wake up. So, he may say, why you are disturbing me? But that is the greatest service. He will be saved. Maya is coming to kill him, to send him to the darkest region of hell, and you are saving him. Chant Hare Krishna and be saved. Bhagavad Gita 3.18-30, Los Angeles, December 30, 1968. Thank you. Yes, so of course this kind of criticism is often there. You just, you people, you always come disturbing us because they are comfortable in their home of Maya are in their little den of Maya and we come along saying Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna and they're saying, oh no, why you people come disturb me? But Prabhupada said, we have, we have to do that. And they don't realize they're in the lap of Maya. Danger is there. So this is the real mercy, being compassionate, saving them from hell. So this is the mood of Prabhupada, distributing Krishna consciousness, right? Someone like to read this one? I can read much. Yes, Prabhu. Preaching is the best service. So a Krishna conscious person cannot sit idly. He thinks that such a nice philosophy of life why it should not be distributed, that is his mission. A yogi may be satisfied with his own elevation. He is sitting in a secluded place, practicing yoga, elevating himself to transcendental life. That is his personal concern. But a devotee is not satisfied simply elevating himself. We offer our respect to the Vaishnava Vancha Kalpataru Therefore, the preacher devotee is the most dearest devotee of the Lord. That is stated in the Bhagavad Gita. They are going outside, they are preaching, they are meeting opposite element, opposing elements. Sometimes they are defeated, sometimes disappointed, sometimes able to convince. But that endeavor that I shall go and preach Krishna consciousness is the best service to the Lord. Bhagavad Gita 6.2529, Los Angeles, February 18, 1969. Prabhu, maybe you could explain why is it a preacher is given so much honor, like, you know, why is, it, why is it this preaching is the best service, you know, why not, the, you know, why is not the, you know, the, the, the cook or the pujari or the, the temple maintenance man, you know, why is it only preaching that's glorified? So, Maharaj, uh, sometime back, like when we started in Krishna Consciousness, uh, someone gave me an example that if a kid is, uh, you, find, you find a kid in the mall who is separated from uh, his or her parents, then uh, what, would the, what would make the parents happy? We can give, we have two options. One is to give that kid a lollipop and another is to bring him back to his or his parents. Now, which would be more beneficial and which would be more substantial? And clearly, if we take him back to his parents, then the parents will be the most happy. So the same way, if, if all, all of us are lost in this material world, and if, uh, you know, if we can somehow take 
these kids back to Krishna, the Supreme Father, and the father will be the happiest. Okay. So Krishna appreciates that service? Yes, ma'am. Uh, father would be happy, I mean, Krishna is happy to see this lost soul coming back to him. Mm. I, I read recently one of Prabhupada's purports, he was saying that the devotee may face many dangers in preaching, but because he's preaching, he will never fall down, that Krishna is going to protect him. Why is that? Why is it that somebody's preaching, they're not going to fall down? Can you understand? Is it because, is it, is it because you're taking the risk? on Krishna's behalf to present Krishna consciousness? Yeah, it's a risk. Definitely, there's risk there. Preaching. Prabhupada took a great risk, right? Going to America at his age, 70, to go there to America on the boat, and there was nobody there who knew him or anything. He could have died on the boat. So there's some risk, definitely big, big risks are there. So, Krishna appreciates us taking risks. Yeah, yes, certainly. Krishna sees a devotee risk, take a risk. And Krishna wants to reciprocate. Krishna is Bhakta Vatsala. He reciprocates with the devotee. The devotee is trying to do something on behalf of Krishna. Krishna wants to help the devotee. And we see it. We see it time and again that Srila Prabhupada went. And Krishna gave so much facility. He sent people. He sent money. Different things. Not immediately. Not immediately. You don't get... Uh, I was reading recently you know, of course, uh, our dear devotee, uh, Jan, uh, Pancha, Pancha, Pancha Jangari Prabhu left the body here in Mayapur. Pancha Jangari Prabhu. So they put up some quotes of him recently on the internet. He was talking about Lord Nishringadev and he was saying, how different devotees came to Lord Nishringadev with material desires and material requests. And he said many of them, they got, they got their desire immediately. <laughs> and, you know, that was the surprising thing, that immediately they got their surprise. Now, it's not always like that, that immediately you're going to get everything. We know Krishna doesn't give everything easily. Krishna wants to see how sincere we are, how determined we are. Now Prabhupada was trying to preach Krishna consciousness his whole life. He, he didn't get much support. It was very difficult for him. And then he got to America and it wasn't so easy. He got things stolen. And then living with people who were crazy and some drunk addict at one point was, he was staying. And so, so many problems, but Prabhupada tolerated and somehow Krishna helped. And we see also like Gorgovinda Maharaj, he went to Bhubaneswar and I was a young devotee at the time and I remember going there to Bhubaneswar. The piece of land had been donated to us there in Bhubaneswar and Gorgovinda Maharaj was living there and somehow he built a mud, two mud huts, two, two mud huts. So he was living there and, and it was just wasteland and that area was so different from how it is now that in 1970s when I went there, 
it was really, it was a remote part of Bhubaneswar and there was nothing there and there was no traffic hardly on the highway and the highway itself was in poor condition. You know, it's Arisa. Arisa is not a very developed state. It's one of the poorer states. The roads are poor, conditions not very good. And he was living there and Prabhupada had sent him there to develop it. And there were no devotees, so now, of course he was a he was a Orient, he could speak the language, so gradually he got people, gradually he got people, and gradually they got money and he was able to build a wonderful temple. Krishna just provided. Because he was preaching, he was traveling, going to different places and preaching, and people were supporting, people appreciated his sincerity, his determination, his qualification. Krishna sent everything for him to build a nice temple. So it was very good, very wonderful. And we, we see many examples like this in the world. Nice temples coming up around the world. Just like in London, George Harrison gave us the Bhaktivedanta Manor. We were living, we were about 100 devotees living in the centre in, in the city of London. It was very crowded. And then all of a sudden we had this big place in the countryside. Bhaktivedanta, we called it the manor, Bhaktivedanta Manor. It was called something, some Piggott's Manor or something, some, some English name, English family name. It was called the manor, but we, we, we put Prabhupada's name there, Bhaktivedanta Manor. And so it was a huge place for us. Krishna just gave it. He can give, Prabhupada said, Krishna can give you the whole world if you can take care of it. And of course we see that in the Mahabharata, that in 18 days the Pandavas got the whole world. They took the won the battle of Kurukshetra and they ruled the world. So Prabhupada says, in 18 days Krishna can give you the whole world, but are you qualified to use it? So anyway, we're not so much worried about the results, but the main thing is preaching. To do that service, preaching, that's important. Speak about Krishna. Wherever you go, whoever you meet, tell people about Krishna. And Prabhupada says, sometimes they are defeated, disappoint, sometimes disappointed, sometimes able to convince. But that endeavour, that's the main thing, make the endeavour. We may fail, Prabhupada gives the example, Lord Nityananda was defeated by Jagai and Madai, they had to run for their life. Lord Nityananda and Haridas had to run to save their life. So at the first attempt they failed, but they did not give up. Lord Nityananda came and tried again. And the second time he was beaten on the head, but still he did not give up and he wanted that Jagai and Madai would be devotees. And they surrendered and became devotees. So that is Krishna consciousness, preaching, don't expect people will appreciate, people will insult, they will condemn, they will criticize. You have to tolerate, you have to go on. Okay, oh, what is this? We missed some slide. Okay, let's look what we discussed. The, the, the destruction or dis destination of a fallen yogi. A fallen yogi, yoga brasta, that, that he falls down. But he will continue. Whatever advancement he's made will not be lost. And he will be able to continue in the next life. And the really a fortunate yogi is the one who takes birth in the family of devotees because from the beginning of life they have that opportunity. 
We mentioned, or we looked at the statements from Prabhupada's purports and lectures on the yoga system, reflecting his mood, mood and mission. We spent some time there hearing Prabhupada's mood and mission, and we have now greater appreciation for Srila Prabhupada's mood and mission and how it's there in his writings and in his lectures. Prabhupada's always encouraging uh, faith and conviction, expressed deepened faith in and appreciation of the practice of bhakti yoga over the other yoga systems described in Bhagavad Gita. Certainly we see with bhakti yoga that it's universally applicable. Anyone, anywhere can take it up. There's no real qualification. Other yoga systems, different requirements are there. Astanga yoga, you have to, you're going to have to really work. You get your body in condition to be able to sit, to do that meditation. To do jnana yoga, you have to really want to read and study, understand the language. Not many people have the ability even to read Prabhupada's books is difficult for them. Even to read today, people don't read. They just read their hand phone. They get an SM, they get a message on their hand phone, that's enough for them. And they don't read books, difficult. What to speak and become a jnana yogi. And karma yoga, we have to be detached. People are very attached. Difficult. Bhakti yoga. We have to just simply work for Krishna, do it for Krishna, naturally detachment comes about. So that's the idea. All right, so here's one exercise for you, just to finish off. How has your appreciation of the practice of bhakti yoga deepened as a result of studying this section? Discuss with a partner, right? How do we do this yagya? Yagna Prabhu? Yes, yes, Maharaj. How, how can we arrange partners? We want groups of pairs. We have how many people? Maybe eight groups. We can, we can divide uh, eight, eight groups, Maharaj. Okay. One of three. Yes. Uh, I have a question. Uh -huh. uh, this question for this um, group work is it the, how does Bhakti Yoga deepen as a result of studying this section? Which section? This section on yoga. The section, the whole. Oh. You can you can include the whole first six six chapters. Oh, whole 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 yoga system. Hmm. The whole yoga system we've been talking about. Okay. Uh, hope, thank you, Maharaj. We hope you've got better appreciation for bhakti yoga now. Uh, shall I uh, divide the rules, Maharaj? Yes, please.
हरे कृष्णा प्रभु यज्ञ धनिष्ठ प्रभु यस यस प्रभु प्रभु आई एक्सीडेंटली एक्सिटेड कैन इज इट पॉसिबल टू पुट मी बैक इन ग्रुप नंबर 4 रूम 4 यस यस सर प्रभु प्रभु in which uh, group you were G, uh, room 4 prabhu room 4 okay darshan balram and uh, divya madhav ji in which group you were group 1 prabhu sorry group 1 okay then ओके यज्ञ यज्ञ यस महाराज आई थिंक वी कैन क्लोज द ग्रुप्स ओके ओके महाराज Hare Krishna everyone back No get Maharaj No yes yeah.
Now everyone is back, Maharaj. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna. So, before we begin this discussion, I want to remind all of you that next weekend is the last section. We, we, we have three more lessons tomorrow and then next weekend. And then that's the end of this unit. So, you, I hope you're keeping up with the coursework. The, the open book essays, have you, are you been, have you been working on them? Have you got them completed? Good. And also, the other, you know, the closed book, the questions. We can go over these, some of these questions and just make sure you're okay with everything. It's quite a lot, I know, keep you very busy and probably you've got other things to do. Of course you've got other things to do as well. You have your families, maybe you have jobs also. It's not so easy to keep up with everything. And then sloka memorization, that's also there. So I hope you're keeping up okay. So any contribution, someone like to, con anybody has a, any appreciation of this section of Bhagavad Gita? Did you learn anything? Did you get anything out of it? We'll Hare Krishna Maharaj Ji, uh, in our group uh, we and Aparagandha Radhika Mataji has discussed that uh, the appreciation of Bhakti Yoga means uh, after reading this section we have understood that Bhakti Yoga is the topmost uh, yoga system and we have to follow, follow only that one. Uh, as you explained earlier that all the yoga system if we follow then we are, it's just like they are just like a stairs, we are going through the stairs and it will take so much long time to reach to the ultimate goal. But if we follow uh, the Bhakti Yoga system, it is just like a lift. If we go through a lift, we'll reach to our destination that is uh, uh, to achieve Bhakti and uh, to reach to the goal of Dham, Vrindavan, we'll be reaching ultimately. It means there is no hindrance in that case. And uh, there will also not, not be any kind of fall down on that path uh, because uh, we are doing Bhakti uh, regularly. So we'll be engaging all our activities and senses, mind in the Lord's service. So there's no chance of fall down. Uh, and if by mistake we'll get fall down, Lord Krishna will help us in that case uh, to, uplift our, to uplift us. And uh, uh, it is a path of liberation and it helps us to uh, become as a perfect yogi. Uh, by following other yoga system, we can't become a perfect yogi because in that we don't understand that the real goal of life is to give Lord Krishna bhakti to everyone. So, but in bhakti yoga, we understand that a perfect yogi is the one who is the real friend of everyone, who uh, who thoughts about the real welfare of society. That is to giving them Krishna consciousness. And uh, and if we read all other bhakti yoga, all other yoga system, in that uh, bhakti yoga is always there. So bhakti yoga is the topmost level. Okay. Uh, and uh, from bhakti yoga, we also understand that uh, we cannot approach uh, Lord Krishna directly. So it is through the medium, and that medium is the guru parampara and the serving Vaishnavas. And only by their mercy we can. Uh, be able to, we have, we have that qualification capability to serve Lord Krishna and it uh, helps us to become humble towards every living entity. So humbleness comes from uh, the Bhakti Yoga, the real humbleness, that the real mercy is to uh, give Krishna to everyone, uh, teaches Krishna consciousness to every person in the society so that they can also reach, they can also get involved in Lord Krishna's service and achieve the highest goal of life. That is go to go look in Dhamma. So how are you doing? Are you developing your humility? So I'm just trying to do so, but not reach to that stage. Uh, as uh, in our uh, home, if anyone comes, so we uh, talk, uh, uh, give them the, some knowledge about uh, uh, Lord Krishna. That what Lord Krishna has said in Bhagavad Gita, all of them, but. Uh, uh, I haven't reached to that stage to make them a pure devotee because I'm not uh, even a pure devotee. I'm also trying to uh, on the path of Bhakti Yoga but not a pure one. 
so uh, it's just i'm trying to do so but not able to completely uh, because uh, in uh, griha's life there is some kind of other duties also but uh, yes it i can say that uh, if we regulate our life in such a manner that uh, uh, means if we do every uh, work for krishna whatever we do so uh, we can become like that means is your husband also a devotee uh, sorry maharaj i am not married oh you're not married yet oh i thought you said you were in grihastha life it means but parents are their brother sister all that oh okay aha uh -huh. Okay, so thank you very much. That's very nice to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. We we'll just hear one more person, Prabhu. Some Prabhu could speak. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, I just want to repeat as it is mentioned in Bhagavad Gita six point forty seven purport. Without any speculation, uh, it is uh, uh, really kind of eye opener. I will read it, Maharaj. As it is, Bhakti Yoga is the ultimate goal. The cultivation of all kinds of yoga practices lies in Bhakti Yoga. All other yogas are but means to come to the point of Bhakti in Bhakti Yoga. Yoga actually means Bhakti Yoga. All other yogas are progressive towards destination of Bhakti Yoga. Actually, Bhakti Yoga is the ultimate goal. But to analyze Bhakti Yoga minutely, one has to understand these other yogas. So this is the purport from six point forty seven Maharaj. Yes, yes, right. Yes, an important point. I I have to admit myself that before coming to study the Bhagavad Gita, I was not so much aware of the other yogas. We come to Bhakti Yoga and we don't think much about the other processes. Even we look down on the other processes, but now at least we can understand that these other yogas are on the way; they're on the path coming to bhakti yoga. So we have a greater appreciation for the other yogas, and also a greater appreciation, of course, the highest appreciation for bhakti itself. It's important for us, and. and we also understand greater the challenge of bhakti yoga that we have to cultivate these qualities we have to cultivate the detachment and the knowledge and the remembrance of lord krishna these qualities of the other yogas we we, we think oh i'm a devotee i don't need this but they're also included within bhakti and if we're really endeavoring to improve our bhakti we have to also remember these qualities should also be manifesting in us so detachment from the fruit and greater understanding of lord krishna and his energies and constant remembrance of lord krishna controlling our mind remembering him so being a devotee prabhupada would say it's not a very easy thing it's not so easy we are trying to be devotees so that's important all right we'll just hear the final point here anyone who preaches the gospel of bhagavad gita to the people of the world he is the most dear the dearest person in the world to krishna so therefore our duty is to preach the principles of this bhagavad gita to make people krishna conscious people are suffering for want of krishna consciousness therefore each and every one of us should be engaged in the preaching work of krishna consciousness for the benefit of the whole world bhagavad gita 4:14 to 19 new york 1966 so preaching very important and who can preach everyone and certainly when you complete this bhakti shastri course we encourage you preach and begin a course after you study it then you go and teach it to others become a teacher and teach it to others 
There's so much preaching needed, so many teachers are needed. All the good, stu good students, they should go on and become teachers. So we need more and more teachers to take up this work. There's more and more courses and more and more opportunity for teachers. Just like now with this COVID situation, so many people are sitting around at home, can't go out. It's a very good time for Krishna consciousness. It's a very good time for preaching. People need to hear. Nobody can say, oh, I don't have time. Now people have more time, a lot of time. Let them use their time for Krishna's service. All right, so that's the end of this text. Now, how are you doing with the, the questions on each chapter? Are you keeping up with these questions? I didn't spend much time with you. I didn't spend any time. I think we only went over, we went over the second chapter. Let's look at text number three. Chapter number three begins question number 58. Uh, actually, Maharaj, we have questions from uh, handbook version four. Handbook and that questions are different from handbook five. Oh. Yeah, this is the fifth edition. You only have handbook four, eh? Oh, yes, Maharaj. We have questions from handbook four. So, what uh, is. Most of the students have got uh, fifth edition also, right? Jan Govind Prabhu? Uh, yes, Prabhu, I think we have a uh, fifth edition and fourth edition. At least you shared on group. Yes, yes. Groups. So, Maharaj, they have both editions. Okay, so I'm using the fifth edition. This begins, chapter 3 begins question number 58. What is Krishna con why is, what is Krishna consciousness sometimes misunderstood as? These questions are very specific. You have to really know, you have to have your book in front of you. And this of course would be, this is the closed book test. You'd have to, you have to remember these things. Very difficult to just speculate about this and come up with the right answer. If you don't know, if you're not familiar with, it would be very, very difficult to understand. Give the English meaning of the following. That's a bit easier especially those of you who are all Hindi-speaking. Tadekam Vada. Yes, you know that. Mityachara. Mityachara, what does it mean? Pretender. Yes, right. And these lines, parts of a verse, this also very good exercise to remember these things because often they can be quoted. Prabhupada may be giving a lecture and he quotes a bit of a Sanskrit verse. Like, karma yoga masatta savishyate, savishyata, avishyate, yeah? Karma yoga asatta, so, savishyate. Who knows the meaning? Karma yoga, working. Asakta, right? Detachment. Savishyate. Meaning? Superior. Better, right? One who works detached is better. Superior. Tadartam karma kontiya mukta sangha. Meaning? Your duty without attachment, as he prescribed. Do your duty. Do your karma. Do your karma. Tad artam. Your arta karma. The results of your work. Kontiya mukta sangha. Liberation, right? If you did tad artam. Karma Kontiya Mukta Sangha. Yobhunkte Stena Eva Sa. 
a powerful one. Meaning? One who enjoys without offering is a thief. Yes. It's a good point, a good line to use. Your book taste in Aiva Sa. <laughs> you can, you know, somebody's not doing it properly. You're taking food without offering. Your book taste in Aiva Sa. You're a thief. Anadbhavati Bhutani is well known one. Right? Meaning? Ana, grains, and Bhutani, living entities. All living entities subsist on grains. Vikarma, very easy. Then they ask, the, give the English meaning of Acharya. Now, that could be many things, but I don't know. If you have to give it exactly as it is in the book, then it's going to be, it's very difficult. And I know some Maharaj, who teaches by example. Yes, right. Acharya, generally, we say one who teaches by example. But in the book, they say Acharya, I mean, the Prabhupada's purport describes an Acharya in a different way. Not exactly in that way. So, sometimes they want you to give the exact word. I don't know who will be marking the exam paper. But, it's, if you have to give the exact word as it's given in the book, then it's really difficult. Give the English meaning of the phrase, Nitya Vairena. It's a good one. Nichavairena. Everyone should know that. Eternal enemy lust. Yes, right. Give the English meaning of this phrase near Ashir near Mamo. One who without the desire for profit or a near Mama is uh, without ownership. Without without proprietorship, huh? Ownership. Yes. Proprietorship, okay. The, now the analogies are very good to know also in the course of preaching. The analogy of an antiseptic vaccine. <laughs> the very controversial thing at this time. Vaccines. What's the analogy anyway? Anybody remember? The vaccine? These analogies are very important. Definitely you should know these. I think the vaccine one, you put the injection in one part of the body, you inject in the arm, and the effect of the vaccine goes the whole body. The whole body is affected, right? They just put the vaccine in, in one part of the body, but the whole body is infected. The same way, chanting Hare Krishna. Chanting Hare Krishna, everything purified. The whole body, mind, everything. What about the analogy of the cashier counting millions of dollars? He is responsible only for counting them, but he doesn't claim anything for himself. So one should realize that uh, nothing, uh, none of what is in this material world belongs to us, it belongs to Krishna. Yes, very good. Very good, yes. The analogy of milk in contact with sour tamarind, it's a well-known one, should be known. What's the example? Milk in contact with sour tamarind, what happens? It turns to yogurt Maharaj. Yes. So, how does it, what's the example in Krishna consciousness? Sense of love of God transformed into lust. Okay, is that right? 
Usually we, transform we, to anger. Usually we, we use this example in relation to Lord Shiva, that uh, Krishna or Vishnu becomes Lord Shiva, but Lord Shiva never becomes Vishnu. I don't know, I have to look at the text and see how they've used it. Explain the Hare Krishna Maharaj? Yes. Um, it can be also like um, we as a spirit soul, as soon as we come into the contact with the material nature, we become conditioned. Okay. Is that how it's used in the, in the book? I mean, I did not see that in the book, but I heard in one of the uh, lectures that are given by Srinya Devotee. Uh -huh. Okay. You see, I, when it comes to these answers, I don't what their standard will be in marking. I'm just a little worried because sometimes the teachers are very, they want, you know, just as it's used in the book, as Prabhupada used it. Krishna Maharaj, huh? can I speak? The, yeah. the is, actually, the statement is like this, 3.37. The sense of love of God becomes transformed into love as milk in contact with sour tamarind is transformed into yogurt. Okay. Thank you very much, Prabhu. Yeah, the sense of love. Okay, so the sense of love of God is transformed into lust, huh? as milk is transformed into yogurt. Okay. The different ways in, these, in which these examples can be used. Then fire never being extinguished by fuel. Put more fuel on the fire, the fire is not going to go out. So, how is that example used? The best cannot be satisfied by right. yes. adding up more amount of sense right. enjoyment. Right, that's a, good, that's a good one, right. Good. Okay, so these different examples are there. There's a lot of other questions, explain, discuss. You spend a lot of time going through all these questions, I don't know. They've come up, come up with a lot of new questions. Gita was spoken at least how many years ago? Are we supposed to remember how many millions of years ago? Six, six kinds of avatars, that's easier. Twelve Mahajans, that should be easy. Hare Krishna Maharaj, I have a question from 3.26. Yes, Prabhu. What qualification are required for beginning practice of Krishna consciousness? It's uh, actually a little confusing and then at the same time... Um, yes, uh, I, looked at that, I looked at that question myself and I was concerned about that, you know, that because Prabhupada has written there in the purport about following Vedic principles, isn't it? Or following Varnashram? Yes, something like that, Maharaj. One should not, not really necessary to follow Vedic principles. So we should follow the book, whatever it says in the book. You've got to go by, go by the book. That they're saying like that, Prabhupada's written like that in the book, that in the beginning one should, you know, follow the Varnashram or follow the Vedic principles, this will help one in the beginning to come to Krishna Consciousness. 
Definitely all these questions are all based on the book and they've got the verse number and everything. So you have to take whatever it says there. Yeah, okay, thank you very much. Okay, so that, you know, we pretty much went over the third chapter and tomorrow we'll go over chapter four. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Um, so could you please uh, help us with this question, question 62, and question number 62 in uh, the, uh, the fourth edition. What, what's the question? Can you read it for me? Uh, yeah, question. Uh, sister, it says, uh, uh, yogis who are attracted to what cannot attain the stage of perfection. So this question doesn't look complete. Six, chap, chapter 3? Six, 62, Maharaj. Yeah, but I, I don't have the same question. I only have version 5. Oh, it's in the, it's in the uh, fourth edition of the handbook. I'm in the fifth edition, though. I don't have the fourth edition. We were, we were told to I have an answer, Buddha. This is the byproducts of yoga. Oh, we are the, told to look at the... Okay, that's the right answer. The byproducts of yoga. Attracted to the byproducts of yoga. Mystic powers, those kind of things. That's the byproducts of yoga. Hare Krishna Maharaj, I think there is some confusion. I, we never heard that we have to go through uh, the fourth edition. We had been given the fifth edition from the beginning and that's what we are following. Yes, all of us I agree. The fourth edition has come into picture. You should use the fifth edition. You should be using yeah. the fifth edition, definitely. Use the new edition. Don't work with the fourth edition. Go to the new edition. Wow. We were told with the fourth edition. Uh, so some of the women are working with the fourth edition. Oh my God. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Akhi Maharaj, uh, the fifth edition of the student handbook has a lot of subjective questions. Yes. Uh, so for the CBA only, we suggested to students to go through, uh, to take reference from because uh, there are a lot of uh, you know, uh, close and dead questions there in fourth edition. But uh, the questions uh, which are in fifth edition are also in the fourth edition also. There also. So, that's fine. So what is the exam based on? Maharaj, we were told earlier it's a... Uh, Maharaj, fourth, basically fourth edition. More, most of the question comes from fourth edition. For CBA question. Only. Yes, that's what we were told. Okay. So, is it total, totally different questions in the fourth edition and fifth edition? No, Maharaj, they are from... They are Are common, you Maharaj, can you repeat it again? You were asking about, what was it, 326? What qualifications are required for that? What was the one, where was that question about the yogi? Oh, the question number 62, Maharaj, in the fourth edition. No, but what verse is it? What's the verse? What chapter? Chapter 3? Oh, it's not Wait, let me check. It's 20 to 22, Maharaj. Oh, 20 to, huh? It's chapter 6. 20 to 23 verse. Chapter 6. Oh. Okay, same question. Yes, yeah, say it. So same questions. So the, the exam is based on the fourth book. Yes, yes. 
but fifth edition uh, edition of student handbook also includes fourth edition uh, question but uh, fifth edition fifth edition uh, student handbook uh, have more questions than fourth edition so it's difficult to you know practice for the student to go through the 99 uh, questions yeah <laughs> yeah i can't go through 99 questions yeah, yeah. It's more like a hundred and twenty-one questions. So that's right. Okay. So that's clear. So work with uh, the fourth edition for your close book test. Okay, we'll meet tomorrow. Thank you very much. Sure. Hare Krishna Maharaj ji. Uh, I have a doubt that tomorrow is the last class for this uh, unit one of Bhagavad Gita. No. Saturday the exam will be there. No, we have another weekend. Next weekend, two more lectures. But in the calendar that was shared, it was written that for fifth June the exam will be there. No? Well, I don't. Yagna, you hear this? Yagna Prabhu. Yes. I'll revise the schedule, Maharaj. I'll oh. revise the schedule. Yeah. I have to give two more classes to finish. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Actually, three more after because one tomorrow and then two more. Okay, after. I will revise the schedule, Maharaj. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, Madhuri. Okay, Madhuri, oh, Prabhuji, sorry, I got it. You got it. Okay. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Dandasana. See you tomorrow, Hare Krishna.